Hey, I'm Rob Jones, and I'm going to show you how to get started using Automap with your iPhone or iPod Touch. Automap is a MIDI controlling system created by Novation, which is explained in detail in various movies on the Novation website. So I'm just going to give you a brief overview for now. The way Automap works is by using a free standalone application that runs on your computer called Automap or the Automap server, which communicates with your music software whether controlling the mixer or plug-in instruments and effects. An Ovation controller can then connect to your computer and then lock to the Automap server, after which it can be used to control your music software. Running the Automap app on your iPhone makes it act like an Ovation controller, so that adjusting the controls on screen is exactly the same as tweaking the knobs on a hardware MIDI controller, only this one's way more portable. First thing to do when setting up is to install Automap on your computer. You can do this by going to www.novationmusic.com forward slash iPhone, after which you'll be taken to the software product page on the Novation website, where the benefits of Automap are explained in more detail. Then you just click on download the latest version of the Automap software for your personal computer, which goes to the installer download page, and select the Mac or Windows link as required. Once downloaded, Run the Automap installer to install it on your computer. Once done, it can be opened up like any normal application, after which the GUI, or graphical user interface, will appear. This has a host of useful options to help you set up and use Automap, which I'll explain more on shortly. Next thing to do is to make sure your iPhone or iPod is on the same network as your computer by going to the iPod settings and selecting the relevant Wi-Fi source. Now, when you run the Automap app on your iPhone or iPod, you'll see your computer in the list of available servers on the screen, and you can select it to lock to the server. Once locked, you'll see the iPhone showing up as a connected device at the top of the GUI, and you can use the view switch on the iPhone to make the window appear and disappear. If you want to change the way the GUI looks, then you can resize it in the normal way as well as change the transparency. The other options on the browser screen here are buttons for selecting a group that your Automap can be placed into. So we have User, FX, Instrument and Mixer. Pressing a button takes you to a screen where you can see all Automaps in that group and can select one by touching it. I'm going to show you how you can use Automap to control GarageBand from your iPhone. First thing you need to do is to select a regular MIDI map. When you first open up Automap, you should have one MIDI map activated already as default. So you just press User and then select the Channel 1 map. If you don't see this, then you can go to MIDI Channels in the Settings menu and activate a channel from there. Once you've selected the map, you'll see the controls pop up on the iPhone. So you have two sliders at the top and eight buttons below. For anyone who knows about MIDI, then, with this map active, these controls have been assigned ascending CC numbers on MIDI channel 1. You're also not limited to just the controls you can see here, as you can scroll to additional pages of options using the switches below. Now let's open up GarageBand. Once open, GarageBand should automatically detect any incoming MIDI, so moving controls on your iPhone will send MIDI to GarageBand. The only thing to do now is to assign the right MIDI values in your MIDI map. Fortunately, Novation have done this for you by selecting the CC numbers that GarageBand responds to and naming them accordingly. Then saving the setup in an Automap file. This file is included in the Automap software download from the Novation website. So, with your MIDI map active, you can just select Open in the File menu and navigate to the GarageBand Automap file. With the GarageBand Automap active, you can see the assigned control names displayed on the sliders and buttons, and now they can be used to edit the currently selected track in your song. So I can change the volume and panning, as well as mute and solo. This means that you can have instant control of all the tracks in your session by having one hand on the cursor keys on your keyboard, allowing you to step up and down tracks, and the other on your iPhone. You even have effects controls on page 2 that can be used to turn effects on and off, as well as add delay or reverb. On 
On page 3 of the map, you have the buttons assigned to MIDI notes, so that if you don't have a MIDI keyboard, you can still play sounds on a track. Just select the track, making sure it's in record, then press the buttons as follows. There's even a pitch bend control above for creating slides. Let's use this to record in a funky bass part. So that the map is nice and organised, you can rename it GarageBand and select the Mixer group. This means that the map will be easy to find at any point by going back to the startup screen, then selecting Mixer, then choosing GarageBand from there. If you have any plugins on your computer, then this is where it gets really cool. From the startup screen, you can select Plugin Manager, which brings up a separate window showing all your plugins that can just be selected to enable them for Automap. If you don't have any plugin instruments, then try selecting some of the Apple Effects plugins here. Now, the next time you relaunch GarageBand, you'll see any synth plugins in the instrument generator list and can select them to add them to a track. See how the iPhone switches to controlling it straight away. Similarly, if we add the Apple distortion effect, the iPhone switches to that instead. If you want to map a particular control on the plugin to one on your iPhone, then it couldn't be easier. You just press the Learn button on your iPhone, then move a control on the plugin, followed by one on the iPhone. And it's done. You can also remove any assignments by just clicking on them in the GUI and hitting Delete. Now I switch between controlling the base station, the distortion effect, and GarageBand just by browsing to them on my iPhone. So quick and easy. Plus, any mappings you make are automatically saved with your GarageBand session. So next time you open up your song, everything will be mapped in exactly the same way. Controlling other music software is even easier using Automap, with applications such as Logic, Cubase, Pro Tools and Reason having fully comprehensive Automaps built in. These are simple to set up, with a link to guides even found on the GUI startup screen. And even allow access to learn mode for areas of the mixer, as well as instruments.